Hello everyone, and welcome to my very first video. I'm amazingly anatomical, and I'm so excited to make videos on the human body and science in general. Today, I'm going to explore the heart and explain various features of the heart, all from a high school perspective. What is the heart? The heart is a muscular organ that pumps blood throughout the human body. It plays a vital role in the cardiovascular system, simply known as the circulatory system. The circulatory system helps carry blood in and out of the heart. It is important to note that the heart is in the middle of this system. Let's get into the anatomy of the heart. The internal cavity of the heart is divided into four chambers, the left ventricle, the right ventricle, the left atrium, and the right atrium. The two ventricles are responsible for pumping blood out of the heart. They are thicker than the two atria due to the extra amount of myocardium present, which is the muscular tissue of the heart. The two atria are responsible for receiving blood from the veins in the heart. As the blood enters and leaves these four chambers, four valves, the mitral valve, the aortic valve, the tricuspid valve, and the pulmonary valve, help keep the blood moving in the right direction and flow. The mitral and tricuspid valves are located in between their respective atria and ventricle. The pulmonary valve is approximately located between the right ventricle and the pulmonary trunk, which is the artery that leaves the right ventricle. The aortic valve is located between the aorta and left ventricle. Now that you guys get the gist about the four chambers and valves and their locations, let's get into the more specific parts of the heart. The aorta is a foot-long tube that is responsible for carrying blood out to the rest of your body. In fact, it is the main artery that does this. The two vena cavas help carry blood from other parts of the body. The superior vena cava brings in blood from the head, neck, arms, and chest, while the inferior vena cava brings in blood from the legs, feet, and organs in the abdomen and pelvis. Adding on to the pulmonary valve, there are pulmonary arteries and pulmonary veins. Pulmonary veins transport oxygenated blood back to the heart from the lungs, while the pulmonary arteries move deoxygenated blood from the heart to the lungs. Last but not least, the septum, which is basically a barrier that separates the atrial ventricles, prevent, prevents the mix between deoxygenated and oxygenated blood. Blood flow in the heart follows a very distinct pattern. During blood flow and circulation, the right and left sides of the heart work together simultaneously. However, we can describe the specific pattern of blood flow that happens in both sides of the heart. In the right side of the heart, the blood enters the heart through the superior vena cava and the inferior vena cava. Then, through the vena cavas, deoxygenated blood is emptied into the right atrium. From the right atrium, blood flows into the right ventricle through the now open tricuspid valve when the atrium contracts. After the right ventricle is full and the tricuspid valve is shut, the ventricle contracts and blood leaves the heart through the pulmonic valve and into the pulmonary artery. Then, it goes into the lungs where it can be oxygenated. Keep in mind that the blood in the pulmonary artery contains CO2 and is deoxygenated still. In the left side of the heart, the blood enters from the lungs through the pulmonary veins that empty oxygen-rich blood into the left atrium. Just like the right atrium, the left atrium contracts and the blood goes into the left ventricle through the open mitral valve. After the left ventricle is full and the mitral valve shuts closed, the ventricle contracts, resulting in oxygen-enriched blood leaving the heart through the aortic valve and into the aorta and arteries. Eventually, the blood goes into veins to complete the blood circulation in your body. The electrical system in the heart is what allows this blood flow to happen. The heart has specialized muscle cells in its walls that send signals to the heart muscle that cause it to contract. The main components of the system are the sinoatrial or SA node, atrioventricular or AV node, bundle of his, bundle branches, and the Purkinje fibers. One very important feature of the heart's electrical system is the ability to control the timing of one's heartbeat. The way this is achieved is through the regulation of your heart rate in beats per minute and heart rhythm, which is the synchronized pumping action of your four heart chambers. The conduction path of the electrical system starts from the SA node, then goes to the AV node, makes its way to the, makes its way to the bundle of his, then the bundle branches, and last but not least, the Purkinje fibers. Let me explain this further. 
The SA node, which is located in the right atrium, activates both the atria through the constant electrical impulses. After the atria are activated, the electrical impulses travel down to the AV node. At the AV node, the electrical impulses are, are slowed down momentarily, allowing the atria to contract right before the ventricles do. From the AV node, the impulses travel down through the bundle of his. The bundle of his separates into left and right bundle branches where the impulses go, causing both the ventricles to contract. The ventricles contract in unison due to the Purkinje fibers, which allows there to be a consistent heartbeat and rhythm. An electrocardiodiagram, also known as an ECG or EKG, shows these impulses of the heart in order to check for any heart problems or diseases. The way an ECG works is by putting 10 electrodes on certain positions roughly around the chest and ribcage area on the patient's body. The electrodes are connected to the ECG machine via lead wires. Then, the electrical activity is recorded and used to interpret abnormal electrical activity in the heart. When looking at a monitor for an ECG diagram, the different wavelengths that you see correspond to the sequence of depolarization and repolarization of the atria and ventricles. The P wave over here is a small deflection wave that represents atrial depolarization. The PR interval that you see right next to the P wave is the time between the first deflection of the P wave and the first deflection of the QRS complex. What is the QRS complex? The QRS complex consists of three waves and represents ventricular depolarization. The rule for reading this complex is that if the wave immediately after the P wave is an upward deflection, it is an R wave. If it is a downward deflection, it is a Q wave. Small Q waves correspond to depolarization of the interventricular septum. Additionally, they can also correlate with breathing and usually are thin. The R wave reflects depolarization of the main mass of the ventricles, which is why on the ECG, it is the largest wave in this complex. The final wave of the complex, which is the S wave, signifies the final depolarization of the ventricles at the base of the heart. After the QRS complex, the ST interval that you see is the time between the end of the QRS complex and the start of the T wave. It reflects the period of zero potential between ventricular depolarization and repolarization. T waves represent ventricular repolarization. The direction of a reflection, if it is upward or downward, is dependent on whether the electrical activity is going towards or away from a lead. Different orientations of the lead with respect to one's heart result in different reflection directions. Heart sounds. The lop dub sounds that we can hear using a stethoscope result from our heart valves primarily opening and closing. Heart sounds can be described by their intensity, pitch, location, quality, and timing in the cardiac cycle. The four sounds are S1, S2, S3, and S4. S1 and S2 are high pitched and can be heard in every healthy heart. S3 and S4 are low pitched and not as commonly heard. They can indicate some type of problem within your heart. When we hear lub, it is the first heart sound, or simply S1, where the mitral and tricuspid valves are closing. When we hear dub, it is the second heart sound, also known as S2. S2 happens when the pulmonic and aortic valves are closing. The S1 to S2 sound is known as systole, which indicates the heart emptying blood from the chambers into the arteries. The S2 to S1 sound is known as diastole, which indicates the heart chambers filling blood. Failing portions of the heart can result in devastating situations. Cardiovascular disease is in fact the leading cause of death for both men and women in the US. Here are some examples of common as well as rare heart diseases. Coronary artery disease, or simply referred to as CAD, is the narrowing of the arteries. Atherosclerosis of the arteries that provide vital oxygen and nutrients to the heart block those nutrients from entering the heart. As a result, a heart attack can happen due to coronary artery disease. Another scary disease is abnormal heart rhythms or arrhythmia. Arrhythmia can happen when your heartbeat is either too fast, too slow, or all over the place. Heart failure occurs when the heart does not pump as well as it should. 
This then leads to salt and water retention, causing swelling and shortness of breath. Heart valve diseases are diagnosed with scary valve instances, such as mitral valve prolapse, aortic stenosis, and mitral valve insufficiency. Heart muscle disease, or cardiomyopathy, is often instantaneous and fatal. One instance of cardiomyopathy that happens with children is hypertrophic cardiomyopathy, where young athletes end up dying on the spot. Last but not least, people can get diagnosed with vascular disease, or simply known as blood vessel disease. Peripheral artery disease, which is similar to CAD but in the body, is one of the more well-known peripheral artery diseases. What can we do to minimize heart disease? I know this may sound cliche, and you've probably heard this a million times, but make sure to have a good diet. I'm in no way an expert on what to eat and what not to eat, but make sure your diet consistently has vegetables, fruits, nuts, and meat. Try to avoid fast food and junk food as much as possible because those only harm your body in the long run. Also, make sure to exercise daily and keep your body as healthy as possible because your body is like a temple. You do not want to destroy it. Thank you guys so much for watching my very first video and I hope you enjoyed it. Bye!